Hello, welcome to the program and a happy Democracy Day to Nigerians. I am Amarachi Ubani. Today is Democracy Day in the country. It's also the first time the country will be commemorating its return to civilian rule on June 12 as ratified by the National Assembly following the President's recommendation. For 18 years, starting in the year 2000, Nigeria celebrated Democracy Day on May 29th, which was the day the military handed power back to civilians in 1999 after almost 16 years in power. That period witnessed agitation by pro-democracy activists for the formal recognition of June 12 as Democracy Day and Chief MKO Abiola, the late Chief MKO Abiola, as the winner of the 1993 presidential election. However, in June 2018, following the federal government posthumously honoring the late Chief MKO Abiola, the presumed winner of the annual June 12, 1993 presidential election for the title GCFR, a process to make June 12 Democracy Day started. Today, the country is not only remembering Mr. Abiola, but also acknowledging the roles played by others who fought for the country's return to democracy. So today, history is made. Today's Democracy Day celebration at the Eagle Square in the nation's capital, Abuja, had a potpourri of activities which made the celebration unique. Leaders from Rwanda, Chad, Liberia, Equatorial Guinea and other African countries also witnessed the colorful event, which was lightened up by a parade, by the military and rich display of cultural activities. Meanwhile, the president used the occasion of the Democracy Day celebration to give what appears to be a state of the nation assessment and a projection into what his government will be doing in the next four years. The president also renamed the National Stadium in Abuja, which will now be known as the Moshud Abiola National Stadium Abuja. The president is also mindful of the current economic situation of the country, and he says his government has a target of lifting Nigerians from the poverty line and repositioning the country to its rightful place among the Committee of Nations. Our country, Nigeria, is a great country. We possess all the ingredients of a major economic power on the world stage. What we require is the will to get our acts together. And our strength is in our people, our youth, our culture, our resilience, our ability to succeed despite the odds. A huge responsibility before rest on this and succeeding administration to develop, harness, and fulfill our enormous potential into force to be reckoned with globally. Thus far, we Nigerians can be proud of our history since independence in 1960. We have contributed to nationalization, peacekeeping responsibilities all over the world. We have stabilized Liberia, Sierra Leone, Ivory Coast, and two years ago, we prevented the Gambia from degenerating into anarchy. Without Nigerian influence and resources, the liberation of Angola, Mozambique, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and ultimately South Africa would have come at great cost. This fact has been attested by none other than the late Nelson Mandela himself. Elsewhere, Nigeria is a big brother to our neighbors. We are the shock absorber of the West African subregion, the bulwark of ECOWAS and the Lake Chad Basin Commission. We can therefore be proud to be Nigerians. We must continue to be good neighbors and good citizens. At home, we have been successful in forging a nation from different ethnic states and language groups. Our evolution and integration into one nation continues apace. When, therefore, we came to office in 2015, after a decade of struggle, we identified three cardinal and existential challenges our country faced and made them our campaign focus, namely security, economy, 
and fighting corruption. None but the most partisan will dispute that in the last four years we have made solid progress in addressing these challenges. That was President Mahmoudou Buhari speaking earlier today on the celebration of Democracy Day at the Eagle Square in Abuja. Joining us now is an African affairs analyst, Mr. Yin Kaoyuniji, to discuss Nigeria's democracy, which you're not new to, and I do see you're wearing black today. Um, oh, well, um, it's a celebration in some quarters. Mm -hmm. For some of us, it's also a time to reflect, introspect. So that's what it is. Well, I, I really do think it is also a time to, to really, you know, look inwards, you know, and think about Nigeria's democracy. It's something we really need to consider. Uh, the move uh, from May 29th to June 12th, what do you make of that? All right, so I think it's been political. It's always been political, and that's what it is till now. Just like I and you uh, spoke about a few minutes before now, let us admit something to ourselves. June 12th did not start on the 12th of June 1993. June 12 started at least one year before that, if not two years. Nigerians were yearning for democracy, but we had an issue with determining who that person will represent. And so, whether we like it or not, the truth will always be told that the winner of June 12 elections was Alaji, Chief MKO, Abiola. The government has not admitted that till date. All right, you hear and you see to say that you are swaging freight knives. That is not what it is. Nigerians all over, irrespective of our tribe, our religion, voted overwhelmingly for MKO Abiola. And that's why there's been a clamor. It's not to say that it was free and fair. No, it was free and fair because Nigerians overwhelmingly voted one candidate. And that has not been admitted till date. So, like I and you said, let's turn it to MKO Abiola Day. Okay, but the real MVP here should be, of course, Nigerians who went out and showed that the power really belongs to the people. I agree, totally. Today, do you think that the power still belongs to the no, people? No, that doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any out of sense. In some quarters, you will hear that those who should be celebrated are the people. Some other quarters, you will hear that it should be on film who was an unbiased umpire. Some other places, you also hear, Babangida said this year, that it should be credited for conducting that election or those elections for whatever they were what. So what I'm saying is this, up until we admit that at that time we came out to vote for one candidate, everybody came out, identified one individual, something which is lacking today, all right? The build up to this election, so many cards were thrown up, even in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. You're from the East, you're from the South, you're from the North, you are Muslim, you are Yoruba, different. Even the president acknowledged that in his speech today. So until we get to the point where we acknowledge what Nigerians truly did on June 12, 1993, we will still be dancing around in circles. Uh, if you listen to President Mohamed Buhari when he was speaking earlier today, he talked about the achievements of his government. He also mentioned he will be focusing on uh, three new areas. Uh, he mentioned security, improving the economy, and also fighting corruption. I want to pick up on corruption because uh, I heard the Rwandan president when uh, well, I think it was at a forum or so before uh, the, the uh, Eagle Square event where he was telling President Buhari to create wealth. Don't just fight corruption. Create wealth. What do you make of that? With, uh, you put that side by side with what the president said today. I think that the president rightly, and that's something for me that is progress. He rightly identified the problems. So whoever wrote that speech wrote a good speech. He identified the problems. You cannot address insecurity without ensuring that the populace, the people are wealthy, or they can make decent living. So first of all, you cannot say to us that you are fighting corruption, and that's what we've done since the inception of his government to your date. How do you fight corruption? Do you fight corruption by going against a targeted set of individuals? Or do you fight corruption by ensuring that institutions are truly independent? I'll give you an example. Two for the matter of fact. I've been told in the last three weeks that FIRS just goes to the banks and they freeze your accounts. And then they say to you that you should liars with the agency nearest to you and your bank. So your accounts are frozen automatically. And then you are made to justify that you pay tax before they write a letter directed to the CEO that is dropped in your office for you. It's addressed to the CEO of Access Bank, but it's mm -hmm. dropped in your own office. So you can't keep fighting corruption as if you're attacking a set of individuals. It must start from top to bottom. For example, cost of governance. 
We have 109 senators who are talking about severance packages and all of that. We have government spending funds that are not accounted for. It is a crime to be rich in this country as of today. So that when you buy a choice car, you need to buy another pilot car. I so think, you think, can't but, fight but, corruption with the present infrastructure that you have. You must show, government itself must show that it has a will of its people at heart and then create wealth by means of responsible spending, responsible appropriation before you would generally fight corruption. And I'm sure that the, gov the president has that in mind when he Hopefully. says that things will change and Hopefully. then he's talking about the next level and next all level, that. Yes. Yeah, we're hoping you know, that things are actually a lot better and we know that you know, they're working towards us. Thank you a lot, uh, Mr. Yinka Uyeniji for speaking with us on Network Africa. Thank you for having me. And a happy democracy day to you. For whatever it is, what? <laughs>